So Tim, thanks for sitting down and chatting yep. with me. You guys have been doing a lot of exciting things. There's a little bit of buzz out there about a few of the things you guys have been doing. Yep. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about your company for those that don't know about sure. what you guys do and then we'll uh, we'll talk about some of your projects here. Cool. On. My name, so I'm Tim Martin. I'm one of the partners at Rust C Software and over the say the last 10 years actually we've been helping companies deal with SCORM. SCORM's not easy, it causes a lot of pain for a lot of different companies, so we help them do that. We, we joke all the time, nobody grows up wanting to do SCORM, but it, <laughs> but it is, it's a business and, right. and, and it's a solvable problem that's mm -hmm. difficult enough to attract people who need help. Um, so there, there are about 150 different LMSs that use our technology mm -hmm. to play their SCORM content, and there are about 150 different content vendors who use our technology to communicate via SCORM. So we, we right. play on both sides of the SCORM world. People tend to be a little intimidated when you start to talk about SCORM. It's like there, there's this, what is exactly is it? What yep. does it do? Especially for those that are maybe new or, mm -hmm. or maybe their role isn't directly connected to it, right? Yep. Uh, so, I mean, the specification itself is intimidating. When you, when you look at the books stacked up, it's, right. it's measurable in inches. It, it's it's right. a significant thing, but at its core, it's kind of like when you go to buy a DVD, you never worry about whether that DVD will work with your DVD player. Right. And that's because there's a standard that says a DVD has to be round, it's got to have a hole in the middle, and when you push the triangular button, it's got to do certain right. things. SCORM is a similar standard. Um, they're just there just aren't as many people implementing it, so it's not quite as consistent, and it, right. it causes some frustration, and, and it's yeah. a little intimidating, too. So you, you mentioned the term LMS, so that's one yep. of the things we get it. The question is, well, what does mobile have to do with the LMS? How is that going to work? And, and so LMS is a big part of what an organization kind of puts in their strategy as far as learning goes. Sure. Um, so you guys help people with that piece so they don't have to think about it, kind of? We do. So... A learning management system or an LMS is is a very specific type of software that a lot of organizations use today. Um, we help those providers, the people who make LMSs or what SCORM refers to as an LMS, it can really be a broader set of software, but um, we help LMS providers do their part of SCORM well. Right. Um, yeah, that's fair. So that's kind of changing a little bit, isn't it? The whole LMS thing. Yep. Talk to me a little bit about what you're seeing in that space. So one thing, just in terms of how people interact with the things they're learning that's become readily apparent to, to people who watch, is that people learn in a lot of contexts other than this very particular learning management system mm -hmm. piece of software. When mm -hmm. you go to say, you know, how do I fix a shingle on my roof? You don't say, well, hold on, let me go to my LMS and find out how to fix a shingle on my roof. You go to YouTube, you watch right. somebody fix it, you go to wherever you go on the mm -hmm. internet. And so mm -hmm. the, the key evolution that, that so many people are aware of right now is that learning happens in so many different contexts, mm -hmm. online and offline. And, and so we as people who work with the standards related to learning, um, we're paying attention to that and realizing that SCORM itself needs to be stretched and pulled or recrafted to accommodate a broader set of experiences. And so you're kind of talking about something that's kind of new that's been out there, yeah. Project Tin Can. That's right. right. So Tin Can is um, it's a project, that the name Tin Can came about last year. In 2011, the, eight, the Advanced Distributed Learning Initiative, which is uh, they're the people who make SCORM, originally made SCORM, and they, they shepherd SCORM. Um, they employed Rust C software to through a program that's like a grant called a BAA. They they employed us to do a bunch of research related to SCORM and what it should become. Um, for six months that project was all about listening. We were asking anybody who wanted to give input what it meant, what some of the problems were, and, and how SCORM should evolve. And so in the second half of 2011 we put a lot of effort toward creating a draft of a specification that was the next generation of SCORM as we conceived it. And we built some prototypes around it and, and shared all of that work with the community as well. The, uh, the response to it late in 2011 and into 2012 has been very positive. Um, we think we actually hit on a lot of problems people care about. 
and and not just geeky scormy people, but people who want to be able to do things in in a learning context. And some of the things that Tin Can really goes after include the ability to play content in different contexts. So SCORM has a requirement that the content be physically delivered to the learning management server. Um, we don't think that's necessary anymore with modern technology, so the content could be launched from anywhere. This is particularly relevant in, and in a way that's relevant for you in, in the terms of mobile devices. So content can be launched directly from a mobile device under, under the tin can evolution of SCORM. Um, that wasn't the case in traditional SCORM. In traditional SCORM, it always involved a learning management system deciding what a learner should do and launching them into that content in a browser. That's really limiting compared yeah. to the things that are possible in today's world. So, I mean, that sounds exciting. What, mm -hmm. what are some of the differences in what we're tracking and how we're tracking now? So, SCORM has a very defined set of information. It's called CMI data model, the computer managed instruction. And it is, it's really an isolated set of things. Did they finish? Did they pass? What score did they achieve? How much time did they spend? How did they answer a question? And a few learning objective related things. That's it. That is right. the full set of information SCORM, the old version, allows for. Tin Can is taking a broader approach to it. It's, it's taking some concepts, concepts from something called activity streams, which is this structure of statements that are, it sounds like English, noun, verb, object. And so you see this on your Facebook wall. You see Tim liked this or Tim posted this photo. It's a very familiar thing. I mean, it's right. English, so it, yeah. it makes sense to people too, which right. is one of the cool parts of it. But by structuring Tin Can, this next version of SCORM, in that way, we have the ability to express things that we couldn't before. And so some of the immediate obvious ones include Tim authored a piece of content, mm -hmm. or Tim commented on a piece of content, or Tim experienced something in the real world. So a good, a good mobile-related example would be something like Foursquare or Gowalla, where you can go check in at a location. We're here at a conference talking about this. A, you could easily create an application that would make a statement like, Tim attended this session about SCORM. Tim had this realization at a session about SCORM. So we're really stretching and pulling the kinds of things that can be expressed, but still in a standardized fashion, yeah. such that lots of different systems can understand those statements. Yeah, absolutely. The, the cool thing about that for me is, it sounds like we're responding to what's really happening, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't just learn in the classroom or yep. in the e-learning, right? Learning takes place everywhere yep. in different ways and, um, you know, with the buzz of social media and all these other great tools that we access wherever we're at, mm -hmm. right? Yep. I mean, we need, it's great that we can finally start to get a sense yeah. for what those are doing for us, yep. right? Yeah, so Tin Can and SCORM aren't really changing anything about what happens in the real world. All we're trying to do is pull away the limitations that SCORM placed mm -hmm. on software and activities to express what was happening. We're not, we're not inventing the things that should happen, we're changing how they're expressed. We're no longer in a sandbox, we're like a, we have the whole beach, <laughs> right? <laughs> the tin can is just like a beach, that's <laughs> nice. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so how are people responding? They, you've yep. done all this great work, yep. what's the acceptability? What are people saying about what you're doing? Things are looking really good is what it comes down to. We, we've been speaking at this conference about Tin Can and what it is, and to a shocking degree, maybe, uh, this is really exciting to me, maybe a third of the people with whom I start a conversation about this, before I even get to the words Tin Can, say, oh, is this that Tin Can thing? <laughs> Which is, you know, that, that's okay. actually quite a bit of momentum, especially in a standards industry where adoption is slow to happen because it requires participants on both sides of of whatever the standard is right. to see people recognizing that there's something new it is real there's a schedule around its release that's that's all really exciting yeah. stuff and, yeah. and people are picking up on it which is cool so you you went out in the community you yep. asked them what we needed yep so i mean that would mean to me that they're going to accept they're going to be actually wanting that right and so yep. they're going to embrace it well that that's that's exciting um, it is. and I love the fact that it really is expanding how we look at learning how we look at training mm -hmm. the things that we track because we all have to consider that especially in organizations they're, they're looking at um, 
you know, what? how do we get ROI and how do we measure that mm-hmm. and those, there's only one way to do it and that's to be able to peek at it, right? To yep. look at what people are doing yep. and find ways to, to, to break that down and, yep. and, and it's cool. And, so. and looking at learning with regard to ROI has always been really difficult because Sketchy, the learning itself, right. it, it's just, is there a return on that? But when right. you start connecting people's experiences of all sorts and kinds mm-hmm. related to learning and otherwise, and then building those connections to how they perform in whatever their function is, whether it's right. as a safety professional or right. as a salesperson or whatever it might be, if you can actually do some yeah. connection there, you can actually start to see the implication of the things they're learning. Well, everybody in an organization doesn't have the same role True. or need the same kind of training or yep. actually look for the same type of information, right? Yep. So. It, it makes a lot of sense to not confine that to one particular yeah. way of measuring. So, yeah, agreed. That that's exciting. I appreciate you talking to me about it, and look forward to hearing, you know, how next year maybe yep. how things are happening and how people are responding to it and how it's improving what we do. So Good deal. We'll, we'll I keep, appreciate we'll it. We'll keep chatting about All it. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah.